Hey hackers, today we are going to be setting up some automation to constantly monitor a root domain and send us a message on Slack or Telegram or Discord when a new subdomain pops up. Now, monitoring for fresh targets like this is really great because the fresh targets are the most likely to be untouched by other hackers. And that means that they are also the most likely to be vulnerable if you're looking at bug bounty programs. This is also a great way for organizations to keep track of their own assets so that they can ensure that nothing ends up online that shouldn't be online, right? So let's jump right in. This is what we're going to be using. We're gonna be using DigitalOcean to spin up our uh, VPS. And uh, the reason I'm using DigitalOcean is just because I'm comfortable with them, but you could use any hosting provider that gives you like VPSs. Um, in fact, if you wanted one for free and you haven't signed up with AWS before, you can always sign up and uh, you can use their free, uh, their free tier EC2 instances for free. And there are a few other hosting companies that, that do a similar thing. So um, basically when you log in, you'll, uh, you'll end up on a page like this. Um, and the first thing I'm gonna do is come up to this create button and create a new droplet. Now a droplet is DigitalOcean speak for a VPS, okay? Or an EC2 instance, if you're uh, from AWS land. And I'm just gonna pick the latest version of Ubuntu because that's where I feel most comfortable. I'm fine with uh, the cheapest, most underpowered um, VPS possible because um, that's absolutely fine with me. And um, when I go, when it comes to choosing block storage, I don't need block storage because we don't need much storage at all. For a data center, I'm just gonna keep it as the default. And I'm going to go with um, password authentication for this, um, for the purpose of this video. Um, just pick a password. But yeah, I'd recommend going uh, for SSH keys, which is usually what I do. And then we just choose a host name. So let's go with automation. You can call it whatever you want. And we don't really need backups in this case either. So basically just went for the most basic standard droplet that is possible, okay. And we'll just wait for that to set up. We're gonna be using three different um, custom tools for this along with um, some stuff that is already uh, either installed on Ubuntu um, like Bash or, um, or it's easy to install like Tmux. So the three tools are a new ANEW by Tom Nom Nom. Hack trails by me, although you could substitute hack trails with uh, basically any subdomain enumeration tool, and also Notify by Project Discovery. And uh, what Notify does is it sends output from command line interface commands straight into uh, your chat apps like Discord and Slack and uh, Telegram. All right, so it looks like this uh, this VPS is finished setting up, so I'm just gonna copy that. Okay, we're all ready to SSH into our new box. SSH in. And then put in the password I chose. And we're in. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is an apt update. So that will just um, update the repository so that when we're downloading tools, we're downloading the latest. Now I'm going to apt install tmux and golang. Yes, that's okay with me. While this is going, I'll just go back over to the browser and I'm going to open up the pages for the various uh, tools that I'm gonna install so that we have the installation instructions handy. So there's this one. Now, if you're unaware what these tools actually do, hack trails, queries, and gathers data from um, security trails by using their APIs. And um, this notify tool from Project Discovery basically sends command line interface output into 
chat apps, so Slack or Discord or Telegram. And then a new by Tom Nom Nom. Um, there's actually a really good example here. So if you um, pipe a file into a new and then give it a file name, it will only print the thing, the the lines that are input to it from standard in if they're not already in that file. And then it will also add those lines to the file. So it's really handy for figuring out what's new. All right, let's take a look back at the terminal. Looks like it's all done. So I'm gonna go back and get the installation instructions from all these and run them. So this is gonna install hack trails. It'll just take a minute there to download. That worked and then notify. Oops. That'll also just take a minute to download um, as it needs to also download a bunch of requirements. And as soon as that's finished, I'll paste this command to install a new. All right, now that we've got those few tools, we can uh, start setting up some constant monitoring. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna make this script, which is called monitor.sh, and essentially, I'm just going to copy it straight in from that blog post that's in the description of this video. Basically, uh, this echo security trails will just literally print securitytrails.com, and it will pipe that into hacktrails subdomains, which means that it will print out all of the subdomains of securitytrails.com and then we'll pipe that into a new, which means that only the new subdomains that get printed will get added to subdomains.txt. And then it will sleep for an hour. Um, the 3,600 is just the number of seconds in an hour. And because it's wrapped within a while loop with no condition, that means it will just keep on doing this over and over and over and over again until we manually stop it. So. Yes, what this basically ends up with is a subdomains.txt file with all unique subdomains and those subdomains are up to date within the last hour. And as new subdomains get found, it will print them directly to the terminal. Then because it's just a text file basically currently, we have to give it, um, we have to change the the permissions to allow execution. So that's what this command will do, chmod plus x monitor.sh. And now you can see that it's turned green. Oh, if you have a look at it properly, you can see that it's got the x, which means we can execute it. That brings us to the next step, which is actually um, setting up our keys. So if we take a look um, at, a new doesn't need keys, but if we take a look at the other two repositories, you can see that there's a section on the config file. So this is for hack trails. You can see this is a section on setting up a config file. So essentially what we want to do is create this file. Um, so we'll make the directory and get into it. And then we want to edit this file. Oops. Is that right? Hacktrails config. Can't remember my own tool. All right, and then we set this file up exactly as it says within the readme, which is this. However, uh, I need to put my security trails in here. So I'm gonna do that now, and when I edit the video, I'm just gonna blur it out. All right, so now that that's set up, we also need to set up our other tool, which is Notify. And this also comes with uh, instructions if you search for config. you'll find that there's a demonstration of a good config file here. But in this case, all I really wanna set up is Discord. Um, I've been using Discord instead of Slack. I switched to Discord because it's got unlimited messages without paying. If you use Slack, you're limited to 10,000 messages and then you need to pay, which can be kind of annoying uh, for automation purposes. So 
I'll set that up now. Uh, where does it look for it? So home.config.notify.notify.com. I wonder if it's already there. It's not. There's this cool thing that I learned actually only recently, I feel a bit embarrassed, but if you put a dash P for make MKDIR, it means that it will create the whole tree, although it wasn't really necessary in that case. Uh, what is it again? Notify.conf. And then in here, I'll just paste the bit that I want and I'll get my Discord webhook URL and username and everything. So now we should be all good to go, I think. Um, the last step is basically just running this monitor tool. And by the way, you'll notice you'll notice within this script, you could you could just as easily take uh, take an input for this uh, for whatever domain you want. These are the kind of things that, uh, even though I've done it a thousand times, I still need to Google it every time. So in this case, we can take the root domain in from the input now, so that's handy. Initially, we just wanna run this without sending it to notify because otherwise we'll get a notification for every... Oh, that's the other thing we need to do. Okay, if you find that you hit this um, command not found, it's just because the go bin is not in your path. So if I was to go go bin hack trails, it's there. But if I just try hack trails, it's not there. Um, the way that we fix that is we need to add that directory, which is go bin by default into our actual path. If I echo the path currently, you'll see that it's not there, right? This is just the default. So let's do that now. And the way that I do that, this is in, in the blog post, by the way, as well. You just export path equals path go bin. And if you want to make that permanent, you can, um, you can put that in your bash RC file right at the bottom here or wherever you want and that should work fine and now um, you can go source this although I don't really need to because I already ran the command myself um, but now whenever you start a new terminal it will be this by default and now I can just type hack trails beauty all right so like I said uh, the first time we run monitor we don't want to put it to notify because otherwise we will get all of the subdomains initially in our notifications and we don't really want that we just want um, ones that pop up as they new uh, the requested domain is invalid ah oh, yeah of course because I have to put the actual domain in otherwise it's trying to get nothing okay so we've done that for the first time and now uh, that should have created a file called subdomains.txt. So just to recap on what I did wrong, I didn't I didn't put a, a domain after monitor.sh and if we take a look in monitor.sh, you can see that we need a domain there. So what I actually did was echo a blank line to Hacktrails subdomains and it freaked out because that's not a valid domain. Okay, now we're ready to run the final command that we can just leave running. But first, I wanna open a tmux shell because that way, if our SSH session dies or we wanna turn our, our home computer off or whatever, then we can just leave this running on our server and we'll still get notifications on Discord and Slack and whatever. And now all we need to do is run monitor.sh and specify the domain. And then we pipe that straight into notify and we push enter and we can just leave it running. And anytime that a new subdomain pops up, we will get a notification in this case on Discord within one hour. So that is so, so great. So part of the purpose of this blog post 
and uh, this video is to demonstrate the power of the Unix philosophy, right? So these tools, when you put them together, they're this really complex thing that's that's really awesome but by themselves they just do like really simple things and um, that's when, when you have a tool that that follows the Unix philosophy that's the kind of stuff you can do you can build out really complex automation just by chaining a few tools together and you can do it in minutes which is really really awesome now um, it's easy to see for for homework or for future uh, automation kind of stuff it's easy to see how you can kind of expand on this to do other things right for example you could use GAU or GAU by Corbin Leo um, to gather you know URLs from all of the subdomains that you find and you can monitor that for new changes or you could use something like nuclei to scan all of those subdomains for vulnerabilities by the way don't just use the the templates that are in the in the open repository make sure that when you use nuclei you're using custom templates so that you're finding stuff that other people aren't finding also you could use something like dalfox for finding cross-site scripting vulnerabilities there's so many different things that you could do it's really really exciting anyway i hope this has given you some ideas and and I hope that you're able to build out a really great automation system for yourself and learn some of these great tools. All the best.